maybe he will do something. Um, Orchard 2, Orchard Core. That um, Orchard Core update. Much more things, lots of contributions from lots of different contributors this week. Um, um, this is a branch which has been merged, but we should see it here. Use correct log error overload. This is a fix for all the log error calls that we are doing. We thought that just passing the exception a second parameter would uh, log the error, but no, this is just the argument of the string args here and there is no args here so this will never be displayed the correct syntax is first the exception then a string and then it will be logged everywhere we're using this bad uh, pattern uh, fixing package downgrade errors uh, this one is interesting because it allows so i fixed a bunch of versions which are not using the which well packages which are using the, the um, different package versions, for instance, Dapper. Yes, SQL was using 1.5.2 maybe, and something else was using 1.5.3 or 4 and so on and so forth. So I fix a bunch of these. Um, Lucene. Um, yeah, for instance, uh, extension dependency model will use a specific version of primitives file system, but we are something else is using another one. So we have in some projects to explicitly define which version you want to use. So this fixed some error warnings, some warnings on build or on publish for downgrading packages. And this allows, now that there is no more um, warning, this allows to use a self-contained publication. So when you do .NET publish, you can do dash dash um, self-contained, and then dash R and Linux, Windows, whatever platform you want to target. And this will also publish the .NET runtime with your application and it will produce an executable file. Instead of a DL, it will produce a orchardcore.cms.web.exe. <coughs> so you can deploy that on any machine, any server, without even having to install .NET. Um, so that's very nice. And if you want to deploy that on a host, uh, on a public web host, that, that, that was the goal, and that works. I tried it, it, uh, it worked very nicely. Um, so for exception, a missing feature ID, from Chantieri, in case we create a manifest file and we forget the ID on the feature, now it will throw an exception, telling you forgot that. Um, fixing a manifest file from Chantieri, this I will show later. Email module has been merged, um, so we reviewed and tried it, and it has been merged. Now there is an ISMTP service to use from any other module to send an email. Okay, send async, and we use the mail message object directly. Very useful, uh, and would be useful for workflow and password reset, which are pending PRs. Uh, add view layout prop to liquid reserve page. Um, so big PR to change lots of um, liquid tags, filters. Uh, the main one was to be able to specify a layout a liquid tag. So where is that? We don't have documentation for that. That's sad. Or we do. So there is a layout tag, and with this layout tag, you can say layout foo, and it will use the foo um, shape template uh, for your current layout. So if you're in a view, you can redecide, we, we can decide which layout to use contextually. So very, very nice, and and lots of changes in the uh, filters slash tags. So now to render a shape you do model.content pipe shape render okay that's the new syntax before it was a, a full tag um, what else yeah lots of changes in names every shape tag now starts with shape shape clear alternates shape um, yep yeah. but you look at the documentation all the templates have been updated so it should be easy to find the ones you need. Shape remove item, 
from this list this shape name and then you render it beautiful so workflow branch updated I see it review it with Sipka um, other things have been merged here for instance provide client size validation for setup page I will show you uh, Jeremy Cook uh, provided um, improved and fixed the, the setup page uh, binding validation uh, added table for SQLite a table of say, site property sorry um, documentation on the site object in liquid page or in liquid uh, that you can access like the, what we needed was um, which one did we I needed sculpture for instance on the home page mm, can't remember which one was not documented but just I think just site name was documented not the rest so we documented it and menu and fixes from uh, Jasmine who's back um, fixing um, admin breaking it and fixing it again and breaking it and refixing it again that's a lot of work um, fixing a template in liquid some branches that you will see merged here a new contributor Matthias Kushak <coughs> That, pro that created the powered by uh, middleware which adds an X powered by he added some unit tests very nice um, work um, you can see it here and it's enabled by default but from your application you can say you can change the options and disable it from your own application so that's, that's super useful super nice and this will work on the modular application so you don't even have to use the CMS to get that so this will be very useful for us to track the user of orchard and because we have that we might want to remove the meta tag in the HTML um, but yeah you see use middleware and this is a default and there is an example um, here Is there an example in the unit test of the syntax I want to show? Can't find it. Uh, where is that? There is no readme. But when we do use power by Orchard Core, no, there is an option. You have to register an option. Where is the option? Can't find it anymore. Figure, you see option. I powered by middleware options and then you say enable equals false and um, it will disable the header uh, integrate pickup directory support for actually email so Jeremy Cook who made a new option in the SES NTP settings once the email module was uh, merged to let you define a um, folder where the messages will be sent if you want to debug your People are here. Chris, do you want to do your demo now because we don't want to block you? Um, yeah, give me a minute. I'm just okay. still setting it up. Ping me when you are ready. Okay, will do. Um, fix this connection string always requiring setup um, due to some admin changes. Validation. Um, remove the unique constraint. This is a bug fix for a SQL that apparently SQL has an issue with that, so we removed it to unblock the, um, the module. And uh, an issue has been filed on the SQL. I will look into it. Um, then um, this is my main work I did last week, and you will see the the parallel one with Jasmine. Let's start with Jasmine. So uh, Jasmine and I were working on uh, rewriting the current themes that we have agency and blog theme uh, rewriting because we need to update to the latest templates from a start bootstrap using a bootstrap 4 and also fixing some oddities like how to create new pages or removing the types that are not supported like content types like a blog in the agency is not supported um, re-adding the subtitle on the blog team so I will show you but I will do the more after uh, Chris um, Embedded files, also huge uh, PR from Jean Thierry. This one um, I will also show, but it should be quick, so I will start with this. Right tab. Yes, this one. So here is an example. I created a new web application. I created a new get uh, config file to point to our preview my get feed. You can do that also directly from the NuGet uh, parameters. You don't have to create this file if you don't want to. In the startup, I added add Orchard CMS and use modules. 
which will uh, start Orchard. And now, if also you go and do um, just my code, if you go to the debug settings and you uncheck Enable Just My Code, it will try to step into any code that has a source link information. So in this case, this is a peer that uh, Jean Thierry um, did. And if I just execute now anything that is running from Orchard package, so I, it's, it's using the Orchard packages. I don't have the source code here. Okay? I just reference the packages directly at Orchard CMS and use modules by just adding a reference to Orchard core.application.cms. And now I can do F11, and it will step into the source code of Orchard, whatever you do. Like if from a controller or another module, you resolve a service, you can step into and see what's happening, OK? All the source code like this. Um, so that's very useful for uh, those who don't want, who want to see the source and understand what's happening and to debug issues. Um, like you have a, there is a bug in Orchard. You find an issue or you don't understand how it works. You can just step into the code from Orchard and pinpoint the, the, the actual issue. So that's very useful, but you have to disable, um, enable just my code. So that's huge. Ready? You should. So we basically looked at uh, the usage of tags and filters uh, when we were using Liquid, and we tried to decide what should be a tag and what should be a filter. Um, and I think part of that outcome was filters should only be used um, to alter output. Um, but there was quite a few places where we're using filters um, for purposes other than just to alter output. Um, one of those was when we were retrieving content, and the other was when we were uh, retrieving queries. Um, so previously, to retrieve content, it would look something like this. Um, so you'd specify an identifier for the content as a string. You would pass that into the content folder, and then you would um, do something with it. In this instance, we're going to display the title. Um, we decided it would be better if we had um, something like a content property that was available in the liquid scope, and then you could just access content through that. Um, so this is what it looks like now. Um, so there's, I think, six different ways you can access content based on what you want. Um, the most simple is on the content property, you just access um, the content as if this was a dictionary. So you can give it uh, an alias. Um, and it, this will support any alias provider that we've got as well. So if you've got um, auto root enabled, it will allow you to use the slug alias. Um, and then obviously third party modules can extend that and add, add extra additional ones. Uh, on top of that, there's a few other options you can use. You can choose to request the latest version of a content item. So this will return the latest version, whether that's the most recently published version or it's a draft. Um, and then obviously we've got access by alias, access by slug access by a specific content item ID or access by a specific content item version ID. Um, so this, these six methods of um, requesting content in Liquid effectively replaces the content filter. Um, and the reason that we've done it like this is that it's much closer to how other implementations of Liquid are used. Um, and we shouldn't really be retrieving content with filters, which is what we were doing before. So um, just to show it working, um, this is the title for um, for an article page um, from the blog setup recipe. Um, I've created a draft that's the latest version but not published. So you can see that when we retrieve the latest version or when we retrieve by content item version ID, you can see we're retrieving the draft. Um, but all other times we're retrieving the most recently published version. Um, that's about it. Uh, next step is to do the same for queries as well. Um, but that's a bit more involved because queries take parameters. So we need to have a think about uh, the best way to do that. Um, but yeah, that's it. Good. Thank you. Um, and
I hope I will be able to show some usage when we have when you have done the third step, which is a cache tag, and I will show a demo on how we can use it to make fast and simple websites. We'll see that. Um, thank you. I will share again my desktop. And I was showing the debug, so the debug is done, you saw that. Uh, then we were embedded files, this is this is the embedded files. So the idea is that, I assume that's it. Oh no, that, that's not it. That's a fix, actually that's something else then that I merged after. Okay, but that's still, um, where is that? Embedded files. Oh no, maybe no, no. He did that also there. Okay, that's um, he's, he's embedding the PDB files directly in the NuGet packages. That's why it works. Um, then um, Jasmine updated Phantosome to the CLN version and updated the theme to do so. Fixed some admin theme. He fixed some bugs also in the admin. I can show you there. Uh, so it start. Did I run it? It was running. So I will start it again. I will start it again. I will use this version and I will clean the app data. Start that. Awesome. Yeah, so two, two things. So I will show you the, the admin fixes that Jasmine did because Jasmine cannot do it by himself. So I will show it for him. Um, show you the new themes that we have and also the improvement we had to do in the themes that would be reusable for every other theme. So this is the setup screen updated by uh, Jeremy Cook. You can see that the, requ the required fields are have a little star here. Maybe it should be red, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so I can do demo, uh, this I will take um, agency, uh, then I will take SQLite, and username, email, finish setup. So there should not be any difference. Um, so it's the same, the images have been updated here. The contact form is displayed but not useful right now. We are waiting for offer to be merged, but then once it's done, we'll link this form with the workflow module and create a workflow for this uh, theme so it works. The contact form will work. Uh, also, if we go in the admin, one of the big changes in the updated template is that now we have um, the menu be an actual menu and not some content items in the landing page. So these are actual menu, which means I can add new elements like uh, a menu item, a link menu item. I will add a link to the goal and say slash goal. And if I publish this menu item and I go to demo, I can see legal here and see the Okay, this was not the case before. You had to go in the home page content, which was it is a solution, but people were confused about the, the menu feature then. So now it's better. Uh, I think that's it for this page. Um, there's still some little work to do, but it's updated to the latest template. Now, if I go to um, the work that Jasmine did, I close this one. Start again. Please start. What's it? Oh, wrong solution. Sorry. This one. Sorry, I need to clean it.
think that this time I will use the blog recipe, SQLite. Okay, good. I hit the setup twice. That's fine. So this is the updated blog recipe with the updated um, images. About same thing. It's cleaner. Um, the subtitle is back. Um, it's using Bootstrap 4. It's super reactive. It works as expected. I also want to show you the admin because just now fixed some issues. Everything is super reactive, and you will see that I have an issue with Chrome. I can't resize from the right when it's like this. Okay, and you'll see the menu is appearing correctly and the hamburger is appearing. That works. Okay, so we fix some stuff. Um, some sizes also. I won't be able to show. Yes, you see this. It's nice now on the right. So little things that make it much nicer. Um, that's it for the themes. A feature that we made to possible also is that. So before, in um, for instance, this widget, we had to paste some HTML. Now you can just say file colon text and a local file which is part of the theme, and then it will extract the content of this file into this property. So now it's much more, uh, much cleaner in the in the recipe, and this is the agency. So we also do that for images. You see here um, the base 64 property of the file uh, type, the file um, import for media, is taking a base 64 content. So instead of injecting some base 64 like we did before, we can just say, oh, load this file and inject the base 64 value of this file inside this property dynamically, and we can do it for all the files. So it's really much easier to update the. Um, the template, the, the theme, uh, by just updating these files and it will be taken on setup. Um, so that's super useful. Uh, that's how we did that, much better. Because some user wanted to update some templates, but um, uh, they had to binary to by 64 encode all the properties. And now if I look at the theme, for instance, this one which has lots, if I look in the recipe, you see there is a snippets folder. There is the landing page dot liquid, which was also base64 encoded. Now it's just a static file in the recipe folder. And when the recipe is run, then we extract it from there. Um, so very useful. Also, a change I did on this theme is that now pages can define their custom headers. So when you define um, the content, the template for a blog post, a page, or whatever, it will use the default header, but you can, from this view, you can redefine the header if you want by just typing zone header and using a custom header for that. Okay, so that's also very useful. Um, and that's it um, for the themes. If you have questions, don't hesitate. Um, then, then, then fixing the markdown editor, that's done. What else? Uh, some topics, I created an issue for that. And let's see what you think, if you have an opinion. So these are bugs that we'll fix. The one I wanted to talk about is this one. Um, so you'll tell me, you can also comment on the issue. Uh, I, was I would suggest to um, rename themes to templates because the issue is that when we create themes, and specifically in, in this solution with recipe, um, we can't really reuse the theme on any website because the when you create a custom site, you create a custom theme because it's adapted to the content types you want to manage. That's the, the templates only for the content types you want to manage. Uh, so for instance, the blog, um, the blog theme we have creates content types for a blog and also the templates for a blog for this theme. But if I apply the theme to the agency recipe, then nothing will work because nothing will match. The tags won't match. The, the containers that the pages require, the menu won't work. There are many things that won't work. So I, maybe I was thinking it renaming the themes to templates 
even if it's just in the UI, because there are still theme extensions and module extension, but what we create as packages uh, in our solution are more templates, like uh, you want to create a custom site for a blog, here is the clean blog theme or template that creates a blog using the clean blog theme, okay? But we are creating a template that will also create content and content types and so, and templates for this, um, this recipe. Um, so I think it will be much better, and and then we will we will encourage people to create more templates, like creating a resume template, creating a, um, a web app template, creating a, a, a template for a, a new web application or for a mobile applications and things like that. Uh, and then you could have ten templates for blogs, like blog that has specific features, blog that has specific custom themes, and and so on. Uh, and custom types and custom widgets and custom features, custom, and when I say custom widgets, for instance, on this um, agency theme, uh, what would be interesting, uh, let me show you if it's still there. Ah, I'm on the blog. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, let's see. No, no, I'm, let's see. So if I take the agency, it's gone. Oh my God, the, no, it's there. <laughs> um, this one, live preview. So for instance, this one, we can have custom widgets, like widgets that represent a section in the landing page. This way you could create pages with custom sections. So it's not just about theming, it's also about providing an, an ecosystem of widgets and templates to be able to enhance the this site um, with dedicated items for this template. So it's not just a theme. And um, I was thinking about running it templates. We'll see how people react on the, on the issue. That depends how you see it. The theme has templates or a template has theme. Yeah, but it's a site template. Like we have a template in a project template in Visual Studio. So maybe it's more than just the word template, but yeah, site template. Something like this. Very confusing. Yeah, but that's but it's not a theme because people then get confused and try, oh I have a theme here. I will just try to apply it to this other recipe I started, but it doesn't work. And people are lost. So then they have a site template and you can just say, okay, I will start from this site template, extend it, inherit from it, and adapt it to my needs. But it's not something I can just reapply on another site. I have to work my site based on that, or just reuse it as is, and then provide more options maybe, and uh, because we know it's a site template and not just something that can that should be reapplied on everything. Okay. So just questions. Demos return status topics. I mentioned that topic. If you have another topic, feel free to share. Good. Okay. Then let's close the meeting.